Hey everybody, this is how you bypass the built-in preamp on a Fluence turntable. Luckily, this breakout wire is super simple to cut up and get the individual wire. So it initially looks like this, and you just pull these out. And this is the gray wire here, which are the tone arm wires, which is what we want. Out will come a yellow wire, two black wires, a red and a white. So the yellow is our ground, which I've just taken some extra wire and heat shrink and extended it. Get to that later. And up here in the front, there's two black wires and an, a red and a white. And the way you just simply check that is on this breakout board here, uh, the, the wires come from the tone arm, wires come from the tone arm, and they go right on this board. And every wire is conveniently labeled. So we have left, left uh, negative, left positive, right positive, right negative. And the way that uh, it correlates to these RCA jacks, as you see, there's two in, there's one in the front, so we'll just focus on one at a time. So there's one in the front, uh, but there's two pins on the back. But we're focusing on this pin, not this pin on both instances. We have left negative in the front, left positive in this back pin, right negative in the front, and right positive on the back. And that's it. So to reiterate, this is left negative, left positive, right negative, right positive. Yellow cable is ground. And all we have to do for ground is extend it. And on this panel that comes off, you just solder it to the inside of the screw. And on the outside, you can connect an external ground wire. Which is super convenient. Because this whole sheath goes over these wires, you're going to run into an issue where, because it's this is metal, it's going to touch some of these contacts. So the best way probably the easiest way, is just throw some electrical tape over this whole panel so it's all insulated within there, and then this won't be a problem. So I'll do that right now. Now it might not look the prettiest, but the electrical tape will help insulate from that ground bar. And now I'll add some solder to this screw, and we'll solder this extended ground wire right to it. It's all good. That screw's going to be very hot, though. Give it a minute. Perfect. There's the ground lug soldered in, and then I just held it with a screwdriver and used some pliers to twist that nut. And see, the tape keeps popping up, but that's okay because we just need it to seal, and it'll do that just fine. So we'll get this plate over, just like that. You can see the tape is still perfectly covering up all those solder points we had. So nothing will be grounding out. Ground wire is still perfectly affixed here. Just to double check our work, make sure that first of all the ground lug is actually going to ground, which it is perfect. And hopefully none of these pins will make a beep, and they don't. Awesome. Now we'll get everything back installed. Flipping this over. You'll see this wire, you can still set everything perfectly because there is gap under this board. It's almost like Fluence was like hoping people would do this modification, you know? They made it really easy. These smaller screws went into the front holding the metal faceplate to the board itself on those metal standoffs that they have. And then these bigger screws actually affix the whole assembly to the plinth. We'll plug everything back in. Now, of course, the tone arm leads, which used to plug in right here, are no longer being used. So we have the auto stop, and all these clips have a little indent right there, so you can only put them in one way, which is very handy. And just snap right in. This is the switch for at the front for the speed. And then this is the motor. I actually unclipped these. They were zip tied together. So that's all in. All right. Cool. Further modifications that I did on this turntable is I put some dynamat here to weigh down the plinth a little bit. I put some here near the motor as well. That kind of really makes this plinth, it, it almost, it felt like it doubled the weight of the plinth. 
because this stuff is so dense and heavy. I took out this screw right here, which allows the center spindle to come out, and I lubricated it with some hops number nine. This is almost like gun oil, but it's three in one, kind of the same stuff, you know? Um, and I put some in here. So, of course, I cleaned out the old lubricant. So that spins super smooth. And of course, there's pod adjustments here with uh, a slot for a tiny screwdriver to go in and adjust the speed to dead on, which is really nice. I applied some white lithium grease lubricant to the anti-skate right here. The second to last adjustment I want to show is right here. This is how the turntable does the auto stop at the end. Um, there's a little light sensor here and this bar uh, moves with the tone arm. So I'll unlatch it and I'll show you. See it moving? So just say your turntable is engaging too soon, you could adjust this back and forth by applying pressure to one side and it'll move, or applying pressure to the other side and it'll move. Now one thing to note is that on certain records the runout groove is sooner than it is later and vice versa on other records. So you might adjust this for just say a Beatles record, but then you put on a Pink Floyd album and this no longer, uh, the auto stop no longer engages. But that's very common, uh, just like I said, because sometimes a run out label is so far in or so far out. So, of course, you can't really swear by these working all the time. If you wanted to be conservative, you could always have it a cut off almost right when the needle gets to the run out groove, or you can play it, you know, totally, just totally turn it off with the switch on the back. So, yeah, but that's how you make that uh, auto-stop adjustment. Just so you can see it better, there's the corner of the turntable, and that's how I have that piece of plastic set up. So this now means that when I turn the selector speed on to 33 or 45, the platter starts spinning. That's because uh, this piece of plastic is basically when the tone arm is at rest, and that is when uh, the tone arm is finished. So I already have at rest pushed all the way forward. So right when I turn the speed selector on, the motor starts spinning. And then of course here is the end of the record and that kind of is a little bit more flexible. So now I can choose the end of the record to be pretty uh, like kind of almost right here at the end of the record, which is what I prefer. To demonstrate this start stop configuration, I'll simply show you now. So nothing's spinning, nothing's turned on, but the second you turn it on, Platter starts spinning. And so you would play your record like normal. And then once it gets to a good spot in the groove, shuts off. But of course, when you move it again, it'll start spinning. So you have to physically turn it off now. But I kind of like that way. It's a little bit more manual. Also, it's uh, making noise because I don't have it on the feet right now. It's a little uneven, but yeah, you get the general idea. The last adjustment you can make is on the tone arm. You adjust this screw here, changes how high the tone arm raises when you engage the lever. So it's really nice that that screw is there because sometimes you have to adjust it from the bottom and it's a real pain. So I'm glad to see that Florence included this simple adjustment right here. Almost forgot to mention, I took the standard power cord and wrapped some TechFlex over it and used some heat shrink. I think it just gives it a better overall appearance and it folds up a lot nicer <laughs> of course I can't get it right now but I think it looks yeah like that looks a lot nicer so I'll plug that in first and I'll use the supplied RCA cables with the ground lug attached of course I still turn off uh, like there's a switch in the back for line or phono of course I still have it on phono but it won't matter either way. Upgraded to a leather mat. Actually, the gentleman that I bought this from included the leather mat instead of the original foam. Or no, it was originally r r rubber, but uh, I do prefer leather slip mats. So that was a really nice upgrade. I'll use the scale to make sure everything is good. And we'll throw a test record on. With everything all set up, let's see how it sounds. This tracking limitation may be so severe as to make some passages unplayable. The needle simply jumps to the next groove. 
or it may be so subtle as to cut. Awesome. And that's with the amp cranked, no buzzing, no unwanted noise, only this, the standard buzzing that you get <laughs> through dirty power sockets. But other than that, everything's great. That is how to bypass the preamp on these Fulance turntables. And those are all the adjustments that you can make. If anybody has any questions, please let me know and have fun with this turntable. It's a really kind of like a basic turntable. It's a clean slate and it's really easy to work on. Definitely if you can find one of these cheap, you can have a lot of fun making modifications and uh, improving on the overall design. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you for watching.